on 52, we're constructing a triangle, and then we're using our compass and straight edge to construct the Euler line. So let's, before uh, we actually get our compass and straight edge out, let's map this thing out. What the heck is the Euler line? What are the points of concurrency that are on it? So I'm thinking of O, C, C. OCC, those are the three points of concurrency that are always on whatever triangle that it is that you try to create. But make sure if we're making an Euler line, the one type of triangle that I'm not going to be able to make is an equilateral triangle, not equilateral. Because all of these points of concurrency are exactly the same for an equilateral triangle, so you don't actually have an Euler line. The O stands for or so center, the C, well, it doesn't really matter. You got two C's. One of them is for the centroid, and the other one is for the circumcenter. Okay, let's go back up to the top. In order to find the orthocenter, the orthocenter is the point of concurrency from the altitudes. The centro uh, centroid comes from the medians. And then finally, the circumcenter comes from the perpendicular bisectors. Okay, so a couple of things here, though. Whenever I make my triangle, the medians go from a vertex to a midpoint, and then uh, the circumcenters are perpendicular lines that go through each one of the midpoints. Since I have to make uh, midpoints for the medians, I'm basically going to find the centroid and the circumcenter kind of together. Those two things are going to be, those are going to go together. And then for the altitudes, the altitudes uh, we need to make from a point to the opposite side, it needs to be perpendicular. And we did that whenever we had to find the perpendicular distance from Back here on the, the end center, the perpendicular distance from the end center point to the side. Basically, if this was a triangle, and actually it is from this vertex to point I to that vertex, it makes a triangle. This would be one of the altitudes, and that's exactly how you would construct that thing. So I've got it kind of mapped out. I, I got a, a, a vague idea of what it is that I need to do. So let's see if we can carry it out. I do have one more piece of purple paper at least. Okay. So step one, make a triangle. Make sure it's not equilateral. Yeah. Right. And there. Pretty sure that one's not an equilateral triangle, so we should be safe. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to make are the perpendicular bisectors. Because the perpendicular bisectors are going to give me the midpoints. I need the perpendicular bisectors anyway for the circumcenter. And then uh, I need the perpendicular bisectors to find the midpoints of the sides. And they point to the side so I can connect it to the vertices. And remember, I don't have to find all three of them. All I need to do is find any two of them because the third one would meet there too. So let's say I find the perpendicular bisector of this bottom segment that's down here. That's the two-tailed fish construction. So just stretch your compass to something that is bigger than half. If you're needing a ruler, here you go. Okay. Stretch it to something bigger than half and make a two-tailed fish. I'm going to stab the point of my compass in one of the endpoints, make a half circle around it, swing your compass around and do the exact same thing from the right-hand uh, points, uh, vertex points, same compass setting. Let's make some intersection points here. And I do need this whole segment so I'll, to see where uh, any two of these perpendicular bisectors intersect each other. So I'll draw the whole thing in there. Now this is an acute triangle here, so my circumcenter should also be on the inside. All three of my points, my O, my C, and my C, for an acute triangle should be on the interior, nothing on the outside. I'll line up my straight edge here. 
All right, so I found the midpoint. I also found a perpendicular bisector. I can connect this midpoint to this opposite vertex, and I also have one median. So I, I've actually constructed two segments for the price of one. So I'll connect this midpoint here. And make a make a hole. Connect that to that vertex up at the top. Okay, so I have one median and I have one perpendicular bisector. Let's do the same thing on one of these other sides. Maybe this one that's over here. So it's another two-tailed fish. Rotate this thing around. Stab my compass in one of these endpoints. Let me shrink this down a bit. And then make a half circle centered or a semicircle centered around the left vertex. Same compass setting. Make another one to intersect the first one. Huh. Well, it just looks like it happened to intersect exactly right there. Anyway, let's put some holes here. And then draw in this perpendicular bisector. Wait a minute. Oh, I almost made it up there. Oh, I would have made a huge mistake. Okay. Back here where it goes. Okay. So now here are two perpendicular bisectors. I've got, uh, I've got this one that's right there, and then I have this one that I just constructed. Where they intersect, that is the circumcenter. I'm going to label that with a point C, the circumcenter. Now, the circumcenter, I could use it to draw myself a circle that hits all of these vertices, all three of these vertices, because it's equidistant to each one of the vertices of my triangle. Now, I also created the midpoint of this side. If I connect this midpoint to that vertex, its opposite vertex, I have my second median, and I can see where it intersects the first one. I'll connect this midpoint to this opposite vertex up here. And where this median hits the other median, sometimes it gets a little confusing to see because you've got so many lines in here, so make sure you follow your lines and see where the heck these things are actually intersecting each other. And that's this point here. So this is my centroid. I'll actually call this one a G, so I don't get it confused with that C. Now, technically, if I just connect these two, I have my Euler line because any two points should form one and only one line in uh, a Euclidean plane, which my piece of paper pretty much is. Okay, so I could connect that and be done with it, but why would I do that, especially when I have so much more fun that I can have by constructing my altitudes. All right, um, so and one more thing, that point G, the centroid, remember that breaks this up into uh, one-third that length of the whole segment and two-thirds the length of that whole median off, and that's true for both of those, both of those medians. Now, uh, another reason why you would probably want to construct your altitudes anyway is that will give us a check for our other two points because all three of them should lie on the same line. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do is make our perpendicular segments, our perpendicular lines, from, say, this top vertex to this opposite side. And that is just like we had to do on the from point I to this opposite side. I'm going to do that same exact construction. And like I had to extend this side out in order to uh, find where, like, say, the sad face would hit that line. I'm going to do the same thing on this just in case it hits on the outside of it. So I'll extend out this side. Okay, I'm going to put my point of my compass. at the vertex way up here, and I need a compass setting that's bigger than the distance from that vertex to this side. 
think here. Pencil just needs to make arc that intersects both sides. Okay, so here we go. This should work. And then uh, to the best of your ability, see where these arcs intersect that line. That looks good. And then right over here, that one looks good. Okay, so if I can use the same exact compass setting that I used before and make my dead guy's eye down below. Whoops, over here. Here we go. Where those intersect, I'll make a hole for that one. On this side, um, if this was an obtuse triangle, then I wanted I will make my altitudes extend past the side. But since this is an acute triangle, it should be on the inside of it. So I only need to extend it until I hit that side of the triangle. So you can see all this. Let me zoom out just a little bit more. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Okay. So I'll put my pencil up here at this vertex and then poke this cyclops in its eyeball and then draw in an altitude. I'll make these altitudes red so they stand out. Okay, so there's one altitude. And just like before, the set is I can take the corner of a piece of paper and I can definitely confirm that that makes a nice perfect right angle right there where that altitude is supposed to be. So there's one of them. I just need to do one more. This side's getting kind of mucky over here, so I'm not going to do it over here on the left-hand side. I'll go ahead and do it on this, this longer side that's on the right-hand side. Um, so same kind of deal. Let me extend out this side a little bit longer just in case, like over on this left-hand side, I went on the outside with my sad face. So extend this side out. Now, I'll flip my triangle around so it's a little bit easier. It's in the right perspective. Put the point of my compass up here at this vertex, and then we're going to make an arc that hits this line two places. Pick a compass setting that you know you can definitely see is going to hit in two spots that aren't confusing. Right. So here are my two points intersection. Put two little holes where it looks like they are. And I can use the same compass setting in order to find my dead guy's eye over here. There's one half of it. And then the other half. Perfect. Make another little hole. And then I'm going to connect that up to this top vertex here. And then see where it intersects this red line. So there's two of the altitudes. The point of intersection for these altitudes must be the, the ortho center. So there's point O. And if I use my straight edge and I've done this correctly, this should be the Euler line. Let's see if I can find a different color of a pen. Here we go. There's a blue one. I'll use blue for my Euler line. All right, so I'm going to connect this O to this circumcenter, and it should pass through the centroid, and I can see it definitely is going to do that. I'll even zoom in a little bit more so you can see some detail. From that point to that point. Okay, absolutely perfect. Once again, there's the Euler line. Or the line passes through the ortho center, which is the point of concurrency of the altitudes. The centroid, which is the point of concurrency of the median. So I have one median there and another one. And the circumcenter, which is the point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors. There's one perpendicular bisector and then the other one.